Now we'll be looking at a simple question type which says odd man out. Odd man out is nothing but there will be five words or five things, five letters or five uh, numbers that will be given to you and they fit into uh, four of them fit into a common group. You have to find out which one doesn't fit into that common group or which one is the odd man out. The question premise sounds very simple but then again these questions uh, tend to be not very well researched or not very uh, not or, or tend to be very ambiguous for that matter. So in some cases you might uh, you might not really be uh, sure about the logic that is being followed by the examiner but then that is a question that, that you have to deal with. Okay, that, that is an ambiguity that you have to deal with. So in some cases you might follow a different train of thought and your train of, and whatever you have thought it might be correct. But then again the examiner doesn't agree with whatever you have thought. So you have to take the broader logic into consideration when you are solving these questions. So it's again very subjective. Kind, sometimes there might be multiple interpretations to a particular question. But then again you have to be very careful when you are solving these questions. Okay. So uh, the premise is very easy. Odd man out it's very easy. Uh, if you find two things which contrast each other then one of them have to be has to be the answer. So that is something that you have to be very, very careful about. One, something that you have to be very alert about. And there is not much of uh, working to do here. It's, it's a very easy question type. It will take hardly 15 to 20 seconds for you to read, think and figure out the answer to the question. So these questions will take less than the average amount of time required to solve a question. And the, the accuracy is pretty fair here as well. You can get three, at least 3 or 4 out of 5 correctly. Uh, if, it's very, uh, if it's a very difficult paper and there is a lot of ambiguity, even then you should get at least 3 out of 5 correct. So I have a set here of 5 questions which are present. Uh, let's solve them one at a time. Uh, probably you can uh, solve a couple of questions by yourself but we'll start with the, uh, the first set uh, which says that Suryodhan, Arjun, Bhim, Yudhishthir and Nakul. So this was something which had appeared in uh, a previous year paper so again uh, we have not made up this question but uh, this is this is the kind of thing that might come in, in the paper so you have to be, you have to be uh, particularly comfortable dealing with these questions as well. So uh, as illogical as it might sound, this came in the papers, you have to be prepared for it. Okay. So Suryodhan, Arjun, Bhim, Yudhishthir, Nakul. So anybody with a working knowledge of Mahabharata would know that there were five Pandavas, uh, Yudhishthir, Bhim, Arjun, Nakul and Sadev. So uh, Suryodhan is someone who does not belong to this group and he was a part of Kauravas. So he is uh, the odd man. Okay. So the question can sound as ridiculous as this as well. So we have to be ready for all eventualities. Okay. The second question says vision, touch, smell, pulse and taste. Okay. Again on cursory reading you should be able to figure out that four of them are senses where one of them is not. Vision is a sense you can see, touch is something which is again a sense, smell is something which is a sense, taste is something which is a sense, pulse is not a sense, it is a physiological phenomenon that occurs in your body. Okay. So pulse is the odd man. Kitten, foal, calf, liger and cub. Now kitten is the young one of a cat, foal again a, a, a young animal, uh, calf is again cow has a calf, cub is again tiger or uh, say for example a fox would have a cub. So cubs are also young ones of animals whereas liger is, liger is nothing but it is a mix between a lion and a tiger. So that is something which it is a genetically enhanced species which has been created by mating a lion with a tiger. And so Liger is the odd man out, it is not a young one but it is a different animal altogether if you can say that. Okay, So that is how it works. So by now you would have got a gist of how odd man out works. I will solve the fourth one, fifth one you can uh, you can solve for yourself, it is a, a very easy question by the way so it does not really make any sense. Fourth one is a bit interesting, 97, 131, 299, 307 and 397 are five numbers that are given here. Okay? So uh, uh, at a cursory glance you can see that 97 you know is a prime number. Okay. So whenever I say 97, the first thing that should come to your mind is that it is a prime number. There is no other major property associated with 97 as such. So 97 is a prime number. It is not divisible by anything but 1 and 97. So that is what makes it a prime number. If you look at 131, 131 if you divide it by uh, 2 it is not divisible, 3 not divisible, 5 not divisible, 7. 7 was a 7, 61 again not divisible, 11 not divisible. Beyond that 13 square is 169 so we will not really go for 13 but we will check till 11 only. So this is also prime number so if 97 is prime, 131 is prime we will have to 299. 299 divided by 3 will give you 3 nines are 27, 29 is left not divisible, 5 not divisible, 7 again not divisible, uh, 2 it was not divisible obviously. 
11, 11 twos are 22, 79, not divisible, 13, 13 twos are 26, 39 threes are, so 13 is divisible, so this is composite, so this is nothing but 13 into 23, 23 into 13 will give me 299, so this is a composite number and so I will divide it by 13 as well, this has to be a composite number, if I look at 307, not divisible by 2, not divisible by 3, not divisible by 5, by 7 if you divide it is again not divisible, by 11 if you divide not divisible, by 13 if you divide again it should not be divisible because 299 is already divisible by 13. If you look at 17, 17 ones are 17 and again 137 not divisible by 17 and after that it does not make sense because 19 square is 361. So this is again a prime number. Okay, 397 if you look at it then again you will figure out that it is a prime, it is a prime number not divisible by 2, 3, 5, 7. Again, if you divide it by 11, 11 threes are 33, 67 not divisible, 13 not divisible, 17 twos are 34 and again 57 is left which is not divisible by 17. If you look at it from 19, 19 twos are 38, 70 not divisible, 23 will not consider because 23 square is 529 and 19 square is 361. So 23 will not really be, we should not really check for 23. Okay, so this is again a prime number. So we can see that this is a composite number and this, so this should be out. As soon as you have got prime, prime, composite, you could have simply marked 298 and have proceeded to the next question. So you have to be very careful when you are dealing with these questions. Once you get two options which are opposite of each other, two options which are following two different logic, uh, then two different logical processes, then you will have to be sure that one of them is the incorrect answer and then you can move to the next question. So a good thing that you could have done in this question was that once soon as you found the first composite number, you could have moved to the next question. Again, it makes perfect sense because 13 into 23 is something that very few people will be able to calculate and that is why uh, it, it is a nice question in itself and as soon as you have found the answer to be 13 into 23, it would have been more than obvious that this has to be the right answer. Okay, so that is how you deal with odd man out questions. The fifth one you can try out for yourself, earthquake, oil spill, tsunami, typhoon and tornado, you would have got the answer by now. Uh, natural calamities versus man-made calamities, so it does not really, uh, it's not very difficult to understand this question or answer this question. You would not even require a bit of general knowledge unless it comes to something like a Suryodhan, Arjun, Bhim, Yudhishthir and Nakul. So in those kind of questions of course it is assumed that you would know certain things. Uh, stu as stupid as it may sound, uh, these questions do appear in the exam sometimes. It depends on the whims and fancies of the paper setter. So we cannot really be sure about anything. But then again odd man out is a pretty easy uh, part of the paper. If this part appears in that paper then it, it is uh, extremely easy to score at least 3 or 4 marks out of 5 in a matter of 2 to 1.5 minutes which is a very good return on time invested and so these are must attempts when it comes to uh, your pay, your attendance tests and uh, there might be a few uh, tricky questions involved but the trick is to move past them and solve all the easier questions 60 to 80 percent accuracy is again a very good uh, thing to happen in these question types and in some cases if it's sensibly set then you can expect 100 percent accuracy in these questions as well so I hope this clears up your a few doubts regarding odd man out questions. Uh, you can watch our other videos as well for other concepts. Thank you.